The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. Now, as we are talking about an army, we need to equip the army so that we will be able to possess the nations. When the Apostle Paul was talking to the church in Ephesus, he assumed that they knew that they had an opposition in the devil. So he just told them that they should put on the armor of God. Just told them that we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. He assumed that they knew there is an opposition in the devil. And we are also on God's side. And there is always a battle between darkness and, and, and light, good and evil. And those of us who are born again, we are deeply involved in that battle. And we need to know. We need to know. Our only strength comes from the Holy Spirit. So this morning, I will just speak briefly on the Spirit of God. There is something about the endowment of power of the Holy Spirit that we don't understand it fully. There is something about the endowment of power of the Holy Spirit that we have not come to understand it fully. Fully, not at all. You see, in spite of the training that Jesus gave his disciples, when he was living, he still asked them to wait. Still asked them to wait. The gap that was going to be left when he had gone to heaven and for the disciples to fill in the gap, that space, that 40 days plus, he didn't care. He didn't need them to go about preaching in spite of the training. This is what Luke wrote about Jesus and what he told the disciples in Luke 24 from verse 44. Luke 24, 44. I'll read from 44 to 49. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and, and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for forgiveness of sins will be preached in the name of in the name to all nations beginning at jerusalem now verse 28 you are witnesses of these things i'm going to send you what my father has promised but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high now the lucan report as to the departure of christ and what he said to his disciples is in twofold. Now, the first one is this one. And then the second one is in Acts chapter 1. Now, the first one in Acts chapter 24, verse 49, he ended the verse 49 saying this, I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Now, let's take the second Lucan report, Acts chapter 1. From verse 4. On one occasion, while he was still eating with them, he gave them this command Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they they, gave, they, they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, 
are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or days the father has set by his own authority. The big one. Now, this is the scripture that all of us are well aware. I just want to dwell on this scripture for a moment. And then I'll rest my case. Shall we read together? But you receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Shall we read again? But you receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Hold that. And you receive power. Power is the ability to cause effect. Now, the ability to cause effect. Now I'm going to leave you. But wait till you have had that ability to cause effect. Now, all of us are full of giftings and graces. The average human being is created by God and he is wonderfully made. She is wonderfully made. He is wonderfully made. Now, God made man and gave man so many talents and giftings. Now, when you go to this side of you look at the young men who were playing the drums. All these things were in them. The ability to play the drum was in them when they were born. Now, when the baby comes out of the mother's womb, the Bible says that this is a gift. It is a gift. It is a heritage from God himself for humanity. Now, it is through human beings that we have this microphone that I speak into. Now, it is through human beings that we have this, the architecture house and drawings and the buildings that we have. It is through human beings that you are sitting on a chair. It is through them that I'm standing behind something we call lectern. It is through them that we have the lights. It is through human beings that we make rules. All these were implanted in the human being. All these are giftings, talents. And then God also give, gave us gifts without. Like the light, like the minerals, like the air. Even the day is a whole gift that God gives us. Now, so that we will be able to control the earth. But when you are born again, you join the kingdom of God. And in the midst of this world is the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the devil. Now, the new creation is also giving a whole lot of graces and giftings to advance the kingdom of God. So when you are a Christian, you have the dual responsibility. You are a human being who is supposed to manage God's earth with the graces and giftings that God has given us. And then you are also supposed to advance the kingdom of God. But the graces and the giftings that you receive when you are born again. But all this can be there. But for you to be effective and to cause effects, you receive power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will cause effects. Now, the story about the resurrection of Christ did not change Jerusalem. No, it didn't. To the extent that some of the disciples were even discouraged. They were going back to a mouse. They heard the story of the woman who went and came back and said that we went to the tomb. There was no one there. And that story alone was discouraging enough because those days, they used to steal corpses, bodies from tombs. So when the woman came back and said, we didn't find his body, that was enough for them. So they were going back to their village. They were going back to their village. Then when Jesus joined them, they told Jesus the story. And they said that we had taught that he was going to be the Messiah. We had taught. So at the time that they were speaking, they were discouraged. All their hopes 
were shattered because they couldn't find his body in the tomb. The resurrection story did not change Jerusalem. When it was lingering on, Peter and Co. even had to go back to fishing. So the story was going to be like any other story. In spite of the power that raised Christ from the dead, the story was going to be an ordinary story. And some of the soldiers were, were bribed. Those who, who were guards at where Jesus was buried, they were bribed to tell lies that this, the disciples came and stole his body. Now please listen to me. All these 40 days after the resurrection, things stayed as it was in Jerusalem. Discouragement upon discouragement. And people were believing the story from the guards who were really bribed to tell lies. The disciples were kept somewhere, fearful and afraid. And Thomas smartly decided not to be part of that group because they could be arrested. When he came and they told them Jesus appeared, he said, how can I believe that? I want to see the marks in the arm, the palm. I want to see the one at the side because I saw him die. I saw him die. But brothers and sisters, when the day of Pentecost came, the story was different. When the day of Pentecost came, the story was different. If you have to possess the nations, in spite of all that you have been told, nothing will happen until we are endued with power from on high. Nothing will change. We can fill our minds with all the knowledge that we have, but nothing will change. It will not be able to stand the onslaughts of the enemy. Nothing will change. At best, we can make some peripheral changes. But spiritually, nothing will change. But you have power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will have power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon your life, you will cause effects. You will change the land when the Holy Spirit came, comes upon your life. So when the Holy Spirit came, these same disciples who were, who were cowards, the people found them too bold to handle. And I even think that the chief priests had regretted not leaving Jesus alone. Because the one Jesus was manageable than this 120 spirit-filled people. The one Jesus was manageable. But you see, if I'm saying the one Jesus was manageable, at the time that Jesus was on the planet Earth, you could find out where he was. That is why they arrested him. The whole spirit was in the body. So they could arrest the body and then arrest Jesus. But here, on the day of Pentecost, many Jesuses were produced by the Spirit's power because the same Spirit that was at work in Jesus was not at work in Peter. It was at work in John. Can you imagine that these two people going to the beautiful gate? They were just going to church, normal church. And then somebody asks, can, I, can you give me some money? And then Peter and John look sternly on this man. And by the power of the Holy Ghost said to him, Silver and gold we do not have, but what we have. But what we have. Now listen, what we have. Today I just want you to know that you need to have him. Many times we say, we, we, I want to ask, do you have him? Because it says you will receive the Holy Spirit. Peter said, what we have, we give to you in the name of Jesus. 
Rise, walk. Now when this man started walking and leaping and jumping, Peter and Co. might have left him and went straight into the temple. But he followed on. And everybody was asking, is it not the same person who was lying down begging? They recognized that he was the same man. How come that he was healed? He was healed by the name of Jesus. Is it not the same Jesus we killed? Yes, the same Jesus you killed. But is it not the Jesus that we gave money to these people to say that he, his body was stolen? Yes, the body could be stolen. But when the spirit came, the story was reversed. If Jesus were dead, how could his name cause this man to walk? That was the question that people started asking. The coming of the Holy Spirit changed the narrative. Your story will be different when you have the Spirit. Now listen. He didn't say that, and you will speak in tongues. He says, and you will have power. The speaking in tongues is just an initial sign that you have entered into the Holy Spirit. But you need to be drawn in the Spirit. You need to be drunk on the Holy Ghost. The Spirit must have you and you must have the Spirit. It is at that point that you will cause effects. You have power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Now in Acts chapter 8. When Samaria gave their life to Christ. Or let's say when Samaria received the gospel. Peter and Co, knowing the difference that the power of the Holy Spirit made in their life, did not play at all with the Holy Spirit, baptism, and the receiving of the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let's go to Acts chapter 8. Let's take it from verse 14 from the NIV. Acts chapter 8 from verse 14. Now, can we read together? When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to Samaria. You see, I would have expected that. They would have sent Andrews and Bartholomew. But they sent these big guys. Now, if you are talking about the pillars at the time, it was Peter, James, and John. Peter, James, and John. But they really decided to send these two of the three. That is how important they attach this particular assignment. It was just a simple assignment. What, what were they going to do? Now let's read on. When they arrived, they prayed for the new believers there that they might what? They might what? Receive. Now, their Holy Spirit. They might receive their Holy Spirit. Remember that Peter said, silver and gold we don't have, but what we have, the Holy Spirit is received. He is what? Received. Now listen, many times we go for Holy Spirit baptism and then we speak in tongues. But what I want to put in your spirit this morning, that you must, you have him. He is received, that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Why? Why is that so important? Now the next verse. The next verse. So we, we have read 14, 15. Let's take the 16. Let's read together, ready to go. Because the Holy Spirit had not yet come on any of them. It was very important that it came on them. Why? They had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus. They had what? Simply. And I'm interested in the word simply. Now, water baptism 
So far as John and Peter and the disciples were concerned, was a simple baptism. In their minds, there is a more complex one that they needed to receive. A more complex baptism. So if this one is simple, then the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a complex one. You have power when the Holy Spirit comes upon your life. You have power. How many of us speak in tongues? Let me see by show of hands. And this morning, if you don't speak in tongues, as you hear the sound of my voice, begin to speak in tongues. May the Spirit baptize you. But if you speak in tongues, I want you to know that you have power. You have power to cause effects. Hmm. As chapter 19. Let's take it from verse 1. As 19 from verse 1. Why Apollos... Apollos was at Corinth. Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at, where? Ephesus. There he found some, some were disciples. So he found some Christians. Some Christians. Disciples mean they were followers of Christ already. But let's listen to Paul. His mind concerning the Holy Spirit. Now let's move on. And ask them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? What is the meaning of this question? This question simply means that when you believe, you must receive. So if you have not received, then you ought to receive. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They answered, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. This morning, if you have not heard it, please hear that there is a Holy Spirit who is the game changer. When he comes into your life, you will never be the same again. This morning, you need to receive him. Then let's move on. We have not heard. So Paul asks, then what baptism did you, did you receive? John's baptism, they reply. Verse 4. Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him. That is in Jesus. So John has a baptism. But the one who is coming after him, Jesus, also has a baptism. The next verse. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul placed his hands on them, oh, the operator. So, let me read from my Bible. Let's come back. On hearing this, they were baptized. Oh, operator. Yes. So verse 6 When Paul placed his hands on them The Holy Spirit came on them And they spoke in tongues And prophesied They spoke in tongues And prophesied They spoke in tongues And prophesied We have come to an era Okay, let's take the, the next verse. They were, uh, they were about 12 men in all. The in all means that all of them received the Spirit. Now, we have come to an era where we are playing... We are kind of downplaying the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Some people feel that you don't necessarily have to be baptized in the spirit. You can other prophesy. Or you can have some other gifts. But listen, this is not the teaching of the church of Pentecost. When we are talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we are talking about the evidence of speaking in tongues. 
plus any other thing. But it is the initial evidence, the speaking in tongues. And I want to encourage you from today to begin to pray more in tongues and grow in the power so that you cause effects. You will cause effect. So the disciples prioritize the power of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, to the extent that they wanted everyone to receive the power of the Holy Spirit so that they will walk in that power. This morning, if you, have, if you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, know that you have, you have him. You have the power. And use the power. You have it, so use it. One of the ways to use the power is to charge the power. Charge it. Now, if you talk about power, you always have to make the power effective. Now, you can buy electric iron. Now, if you don't plug it, you can just put this iron on your cheeks and nothing will happen to you. So you have it, but it is not effective. If you want to use it to iron, it cannot iron anything because it has to be charged. So many of us just receive the Holy Spirit baptism and we think it is over. We are done. And sometimes we, we speak in tongues. Other times we do not. We don't even know that we have the power. But this morning you have the power. And I want this power to be effective in your life. Cause effect. Cause effect. Cause effect in your family and cause effect in your schools. Cause effect in this nation. Cause effect wherever you are working, you need to cause effect. Cause effect. Now, when you are baptized in water, and then the pastor just lift your, your head or lift you up from the water and you kind of walking away from the baptism site. You realize that water will be dripping from your body and the dress. So when you look behind, you see droplets of water. Now that is also for baptizing you in water. But if Jesus baptizes you in the, in the fluid of the Holy Spirit, now, there must be droplets of the fire of the Holy Spirit behind you. There must be evidence that you have been baptized in the Holy Ghost. There must be clear evidence, not just by speaking in tongues, but there must be evidence that you have power. There must be evidence that you have power. I will soon rest my case. But let me talk about speaking in tongues. Because I think that we need to cause effect in this nation. And I don't think that we have any other power to help us than the power of the Holy Spirit. I want us to dip in our relationship with the Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians 14. Verse 2. 1 Corinthians 14. Verse 2. For anyone who speaks in a tongue, does not speak to people but to God. Indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the Spirit. So speaking in tongues is uttering mysteries by the Spirit. We, ju we just don't want to be speaking in tongues. But you have the power. And know that when you open your mouth to speak in tongues, you speak, you speak mysteries. In the spirit. Now hold that in your heart. Verse 4. 
Anyone who speaks in tongues edifies themselves. But the one who prophesies edifies the church. This is not to put prophecy over speaking in tongues. But in the public arena, and when we have come to church, he is saying that when you speak in tongues, you edify yourself. Simply means that you charge up yourself, yourself, your person, yourself, you alone. But when someone prophesies, because we hear the person speak and we understand the language, the benefit is to all of us. But listen, if speaking in tongues is edifying yourself, how many of us would you want to speak in tongues? Lift up your hands and let me see. How many of us would not want to? So when people are saying that the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, when you are baptized, some can speak in tongues, others can prophesy. If speaking in tongues is edifying yourself, it means that this gift, you can't compare it with any other. Because all of us must have the ability to edify ourselves and charge ourselves. We need to strengthen ourselves, pray in the Holy Ghost. So the teaching that is going around that when you are baptized in the Spirit, you can either speak in tongues or prophesy. Please, don't take that. It is not classical Pentecostal teaching. We still hold on to the fact that speaking in tongues is an experience that all of us need to go through. And when you have had it, please, Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. Because any time that you speak in tongues, you edify yourself. You charge your battery. Now, can you imagine that you have a phone? You have a phone. But in the morning, you didn't charge the phone. So people call, and the call does not come through, even though you have a phone. So you may have the Holy Spirit, but it must work. It must cause effects. And one of the ways that we must continue to pray in the Holy Spirit. Don't let us downplay the speaking in tongues at all, especially when you have the power. Now, verse 18, same chapter. This is Apostle Paul. Shall we read together? I thank God that I speak in tongues more than I speak in tongues more than all of you, so I thank God. If speaking in tongues does not have benefits, how will he simply say I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you? So we want you to begin to charge your batteries. Not just when we have gathered together like this, but when you wake up in the middle of the night, you ought to roar. You ought to roar. You ought to charge your battery because God has an army. We are marching through the land and there are enemies on the land. There are, there are other forces in the land. So we need to begin to roar. Let us charge our batteries as young people. Listen, this is your time and this is your generation. Some of you are waiting to become 40 years. By the time you are 40 years, your generation is past and gone. This is your time. And then we need to change our world. What happened to the disciples was simple. The coming of the Holy Spirit changed them. And they changed their world. Now listen. The coming of the Holy Spirit and the tongues that they received really changed them. And they changed their world. This is how the people of their generation saw them. Some of them saw them as people who changed the world, who turned the world upside down. Others saw them and referred to them as trouble causes. 
it really depends on where you, you were standing and how you were looking at them. They troubled the camp of the enemy. And they cast out demons. Yet the community admired them. And they respected them. And they joined them. They preached in the name of Jesus. And delivered the oppressed. The sick was healed by their hands. And many were added to the faith. This morning, before we depart, the only gift that we need is the power of the Holy Spirit. And you must have it. From today forward, have it in your spirit that you have the Spirit. But you need to charge it and make it effective so that you will be of a benefit to the kingdom of God. Let me just tell this story and... I'll call it a day. You see, when you, you see a drunkard, the drunkard is somebody who was fed on wine and he keeps feeding on wine to the extent that the wine is destroying his body. But you don't pour wine on your body. You drink it. So the wine goes into the body. And the wine begins to have effect on the outside. But when you get drunk, it doesn't necessarily mean that the following day you, you still be drunk. If you want to be drunk, you have to intentionally go on drinking. And some people keep on drinking and drinking and drinking. And sometimes they sleep at the beer bar. Everybody leaves the beer bar. They are drunk and they slept there. Now they wake up, they go home, and they are the first people to be at the bar. They are the last to leave and the first to be there. Now they are so drunk and they are fed on liquor to the extent that they are... When you check their blood, the level of alcohol is very high. Now, so the level of alcohol in their blood is high already. So now they don't need much, just a thought, and they are back to normal. Now, when you see such people, they see things differently. They are the only group of people who can look at, at, at an articulator coming from far, and you go and stand in the middle of the road. Say, hey, hey, stop, 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 stop. And the articulator driver will stop. And say, you see, I stopped you. I stopped you. <laughs> he said, I stopped you. I stopped you. You know why? They see things differently. The only, the only group of people who come and stand here and say, hey, I see Michael. I see Michael. I see Gabriel. Then all of us will be looking around. We are not seeing anything. But the drunkard says that he's seeing Michael. And he's seeing Gabriel. Now, you have the same kind of feeling when you are filled in the Spirit. You begin to see visions of heaven. Yes, visions of heaven. <laughs> oh, there was this drunkard. that he was not paying his rent. And the landlord has been disturbing him and he also doesn't have money. He doesn't really have money. And then one day, he decided to go and drink and he got really drunk. Then the landlord came knocking at his door. Bang, 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 bang. So who are you? And some the landlord, he mentioned his name. <laughs> and this drunkard says that by the time I count three, <laughs> you, you should leave, 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 leave the room. By the time I count three, you know what he has going to do? He's going to buy a machete, machete, cutlass. 
And then the landlord is coming for his money. But he's inside there drunk. He just took the machete and then he hit that side, the flat part, at the door. Now the door was shut and the landlord was at the back there. He said, bang, 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 by the time I come through, you should be gone. Do you think the landlord was still standing there? No. Where did he get the boldness from? From the wine. From the wine. There is nothing that will cause us to change our world. Unless we are first changed by the power of the Spirit, then we can change our world. You, you can go to a drunkard's house. You will not go and find him there. You only go and see that maybe his dress is hanged in his room. But the whole place is charged. The man himself is not in the shed. It is only the shed that is in the room. But he is a drunkard. And even his shirt is charging the whole room. That's how come that people will touch Jesus' garment and they will be healed. That is how come. You see, unless you are changed, you cannot change the world. This possessing the nation's agenda will not come on unless we are completely changed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Then we can change our world. We can change our world. Even the election at campuses, there is corruption. So when you begin from there, how are, you going, how are you going to change this nation? But people will say, well, it doesn't matter. Because they are not seeing images of heaven. So they say, it doesn't matter. We can't stand it. Sometimes, you see a very nice man coming. But the lips are red. The face is emaciated. Just because he's so drunk and it's affected his face. I pray that the Holy Spirit that you have will affect your looks. That when people see you, they will see Christ in you. So all that I'm leaving you this morning is this. There is an agenda to be fulfilled. There is a nation to take for the Lord. There is an army that we are raising. You have a part in the army. And we are hoping in you, young people. But the only way that we can effectively execute this agenda is by the filling, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. You have him. So use him. Let him change you. So you can change your world. Shall we rise to our feet?